Jesus Christ, the most important person who ever lived. Born around 2,000 years ago, he claimed to be God. But was he a real person? I met someone the other day who said that they didn't believe in the historical existence of Jesus. I find that really quite difficult to understand why. I'm a scientist by background and therefore evidence is really important for me. Now, of course, I can't use a scientific experiment to test whether Jesus was alive 2000 years ago, but I've got very strong history. I've got the testimony of the gospels themselves, four different accounts about his life. I've got the evidence of those who wrote at the same time, but outside the Bible, pointing to his existence. I've got the testimony of those down the years who've passed down verbal stories about Jesus. And I spend my life these days as a theologian studying the authenticity of these accounts. Now, I can't prove it, but I have to say that the majority of evidence, the weight of evidence, is so great that I would find it really difficult not to believe that Jesus was a historical person. At Easter, we remember how he died and we celebrate his resurrection, events that happened in a real place at a specific point in history. Whether there was a person in the first century who was crucified by Romans, uh, there is a whole host of historical evidence for that, more evidence for the existence of Jesus as a historical figure than there is for Julius Caesar, and no one is suggesting, I think, that Julius Caesar never existed. Was Jesus more than a prophet or a good teacher? But the thing that strikes me about Jesus is quite extraordinary teaching and claims about himself. He doesn't simply point us towards God. He says, I am the way to God. He doesn't simply uh, talk about the forgiveness of God. He pronounces God's forgiveness as God himself might do. And that for me poses a question. It says he is more than just a teacher or a prophet. What other explanations might there be? Let's assess the evidence. And at the end of the day, for me, there's only one natural explanation, that Jesus was more than a teacher and a prophet. He was God himself walking the pages of history. The crucifixion is very, very rarely painted in early Christian art. And because it was seen as a very shameful death, and um, they recognized that's what happened to Jesus, but they didn't want to represent it. They wanted to represent him um, doing good things like, um, like miracles. Occasionally, when, when you do get a crucifixion in the early Christian art, Christ is always alive on the cross. He's always looking out. Because of the resurrection, he's, he's somebody who has defeated death. He has come through and he's still alive. He is not dead. He doesn't die. He goes on. More than 500 people saw Jesus alive again after his crucifixion. Today, a third of the world's population describe themselves as Christians, followers of Jesus. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead gives hope to Jesus' followers today. And so around 12 or 13, I began to explore uh, offering my life to Christ and to, to be a follower. It took me some time because I didn't quite know what to do. It seemed too simple. You know, you say a prayer of repentance and then suddenly you're a Christian. So it took me some time to believe that. And it was actually reading a piece of scripture which reminded me that uh, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. The main thing that convinced me to become a follower of Jesus was that I read the Bible for myself. I'd never done that before. And there were lots of the parts of the Bible that I didn't understand. Still, some parts of the Bible that I don't understand. But the story of Jesus was so gripping, so compelling and so provocative that in the end I found myself asking the question, can this man's life, death and resurrection be explained in any other way than he is God? 2,000 years ago, Jesus asked his friends, who do you say I am? Today, he asks the same question, who do you say I am?